en route to the Kennedy Space Center, Florida, and a touchdown that uh, was anticipated to occur about two and a half minutes ago. Flight controllers received uh, no further communications with the spacecraft after about 8 a.m. Central Time, and uh, no further tracking data from the spacecraft uh, was gained from C-band tracking radar at the Merritt Island tracking station in Florida. We are listening to Mission Control uh, trying to get in touch with the Space Shuttle Columbia. For those of you who are uh, just uh, tuning in right now, we are Contingency breaking into procedures in effect in uh, Mission Control. Excuse me, Mr. Second, listen, Mission Control to uh, conserve all their data and uh, log books and notes that okay. have been taken that uh, being instructed by Flight Director Leroy and Once Kane. again, ladies and gentlemen, we are breaking the programming to tell you about the Space Shuttle again, Columbia. It was scheduled to land at 9.16 Eastern Time about three minutes ago. However, Mission Control lost contact with the shuttle about uh, 20 minutes ago at uh, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. The shuttle had been on a 16-day scientific research mission that included the first Israeli astronaut. Okay, Bill, you were giving us the procedure of what normally happens, say, an hour before a shuttle is scheduled to land. Go ahead and pick that up if you would. Well, well, that's right. They slow the spacecraft down by about 170 miles an hour. That drops the far side of the orbit into the atmosphere and sets up a landing in Florida. Uh, they cross the coast of uh, California, just north of San Francisco, a few minutes before 6 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, it was expected to put on a pretty good show as it streaked through the atmosphere. It gets very hot, as you know. Uh, it was about, uh, I don't know, a couple of hundred, I'm not sure what the altitude was. They were over in northern Texas when they had the last bit of communications with them. Uh, during a normal uh, return, uh, they would simply continue down here under computer control, and then at an altitude of about 50,000 feet, uh, the commander would take over manual control and guide it to a landing. Bill, you're in touch with folks down there, uh, and again, we want to be, you know, very careful. We don't officially know anything at this point. You mentioned a moment ago that you are hearing some things. Tell us again what other things are coming Since your way. Well, uh, no communications were received moment, Russ. Columbia, sure. uh, and no tracking data received uh, through the Merritt Island tracking station. Uh, those uh, efforts made, the flight dynamics officer reports uh, no objects tracked. Well, Russ, we do know this much. Effect. It takes an hour to get on the ground, and the shuttle is a powerless glider when it makes its descent. Uh, the fact that they're five minutes overdue, uh, I don't believe they're in the air anymore. I can tell you that. Mm. The shuttle can't linger. Um, uh, being this late, I'm, I'm very concerned that uh, something bad has happened. Mm. Columbia's crew included six Americans, and I'm reading from the wire copy here, they completed all of their research experiments, 80 plus experiments in, in, in orbit. Specifically, Bill, what was the point of this mission? Very complicated, Russ. It was, as you said, more than 80 experiments. This was an around-the-clock mission. The seven astronauts split up into two shifts uh, to collect as much data as possible, working 24 hours a day over that entire 16 days. It's interesting. This is Columbia, of course, was NASA's first space shuttle, uh, but this was one of the last missions NASA has that doesn't go to the space station. There's only one more mission like that on the books, a mission to the Hubble Space Telescope in 2004, but this was the last mission of its kind. It's also interesting, Russ, that this mission happened over uh, January you know, 17 years ago, on January the 28th, the shuttle Challenger uh, was destroyed in a launch failure, as you know, uh, with teacher right. astronaut uh, Krista McAuliffe on board. Another interesting bit of uh, coincidence, uh, Barbara Morgan, Krista McAuliffe's backup, is here at the Cape today. She's supposed to fly aboard Columbia in, in November to become uh, the first educator astronaut at space. Mm. So she was here uh, doing approaches with Chief Astronaut Kit Rominger on a shuttle training aircraft, uh, and it's kind of... Uh, I don't know what the right word is. She yeah. was here, of course, obviously, on January the 28th, 1986, 17 years ago. She's here today, and uh, her shuttle, Columbia, the one she was going to ride, is the one that's overdue. Mm. That's very interesting. Bill Harwood at the, the Kennedy Space Center. We appreciate you joining us this morning. Once again, I want to tell people that we're on the air. It's Saturday morning. A lot of people just waking up. It is 922 on the East Coast. The Space Shuttle Columbia was scheduled to land at 916 Eastern Time about six minutes ago. However, folks at Mission Control lost contact with the shuttle at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. 22 minutes ago, and obviously there is much concern right now as to the whereabouts of the shuttle and what's going on. You're looking right now at a live picture of Mission Control as they've been talking down there, trying to get in touch with the folks on, on board the shuttle, and hopefully, keeping our fingers crossed here, hopefully uh, things yeah. will be yeah. okay. Let's listen in just for a second. Mission Control is going to talk. Uh, Russ, this is Bill. I was going I'm to sorry, say, no. if you look at the central screen at Mission Control, the one that shows that outline of the United States, that track across it was the projected ground track of the space shuttle as it came home uh, today. And of course, as you see over Texas there is where 
uh, from that point forward toward Florida, it's, it's strictly projected, and of course, uh, we don't have any evidence that the shuttle actually flew it. Mm -hmm. I let, me, let me give you a little uh, update on who's on board this flight. We haven't mentioned the astronauts. The commander is Rick Husband. He's making his first flight as a commander, his second uh, flight overall, but his first as commander, his pilot, uh, William Willie McCool, uh, making his first flight. The flight engineer, Kalpana Chavla, uh, born in India, I believe, uh, but a U.S. citizen. And then uh, four other researchers, two physicians, Laurel Clark and, and David Brown, the payload commander, Michael Anderson, and of course, Ilan Ramon, the first Israeli to fly in space, was on board this flight. Uh, very, very competent crew, very uh, accomplished crew, and certainly went through this mission with great success and appeared to be having a, a fabulous time on the flight. And uh, like I said, everything was normal. Russ, let me point out one thing. Okay. The only thing that's even remotely out of the ordinary about this flight uh, from a flying standpoint was during launch there is some video uh, that showed a bit of insulation on the external tank you know that orange foam on the right. tank that helps protect it during ascent a bit of insulation came off um, and hit the shuttle's left wing uh, as it flew up it hit it near a leading edge and of course you know this area of the wing if you can see this yes we can uh, gets extremely hot during re-entry and uh, the shuttle experiences peak temperatures of almost 3,000 degrees when it's coming in. Uh, the flight director Leroy Kane, who's on console in mission control today, was asked about this yesterday, said that uh, the engineers and analysts had examined this in, in great detail and didn't think this was any concern at all. He said they were going to fly a normal reentry trajectory, so I'm not trying to suggest that that's uh, uh, any factor at all. It's just the only thing out of the ordinary I can I think of uh, so far. But uh, obviously any significant damage on a leading edge of a wing uh, would in fact uh, this is uh, Mission Control effective. Houston. Let's listen to Mission Flight Control. Controllers here continuing a contingency operation, uh, securing information and data. The last communications uh, with the Space Shuttle Columbia were at 8 a.m. Central Time as it uh, was flying 200,000 feet above Central Texas en route to the Kennedy Space Center for a landing. No communications have been received uh, with the spacecraft since. No tracking data of objects of any kind reported uh, by the Merritt Island tracking site and its C-band radar uh, when used to sweep the sky. Bill Harwood at the Kennedy Space Center as we watch folks at Mission Control. Give us your insight here. Flight Director Leroy Kane has declared a contingency. Flight controllers are securing all information and uh, data and notes. And Russ, declaring a contingency means that they believe the shuttle has been lost. Is that right? Mm -hmm. No tracking uh, reported again of Columbia since about 8 a.m. Central Time as it was descending toward Florida, toward the Kennedy Space Center, above Central Texas. Russ, I'll mention the shuttle does have a bailout system on board that they installed after the Challenger accident as a safety feature. They have the capability of blowing off the side hatch of the shuttle and parachuting out, but that requires the shuttle to be in a level, controlled flight, mm -hmm. and it's hard to imagine a scenario that would lose, uh, cause them to lose communications uh, and have that level of an emergency and still be able to get out of the spacecraft. Uh, but I, I mention it because obviously we can't rule anything sure. out at this point. You, you touched on this a moment ago, but uh, let's see, the shuttle when it lost, the last communications was 16 minutes before the scheduled landing. It typically, right. what would the altitude be of a shuttle about at that two, point? About 200,000 feet. I mean, they're really up there. Uh, uh, to you and me, that's almost space flight. But uh, uh, they're obviously back down in the atmosphere. They're getting a lot of heating through that phase of flight. And uh, I, I'm not sure what could have caused something like this. There was a brief bit of communications with mission control. I heard Charlie Hobaugh, the, the capsule communi communicator, they call him, the person who talks to the crew, uh, mention a tire pressure uh, reading uh, from the shuttle. I don't know what that means. You know, you can speculate all you want about the heat loads and they have pressure sensors on tires and if things were getting too hot you could have pressure changes in the tires but mm -hmm. that's just pure uh, speculation and we shouldn't go there. I'm just mentioning it because it, it is a bit of communication that we had. I understand that. Looking at that picture of mission control, I mean just to look at it, there, there are not folks running around, there, there's not visibly a sense of panic but Bill give us the benefit of your insight here. What's going on down there? Well, when they declare a contingency procedures are in effect, which is what Leroy Kane, the entry flight director, has done, that means that all the console operators, these people that are controlling various systems on the shuttle, they're, they're telling their computers to basically save everything. Uh, when you have an accident or an incident, uh, you want to save all the data to help you reconstruct what might have happened. Uh, the shuttle sends back an enormous 
stream of telemetry, uh, data that some of it you look at in real time, some of it you, you store and look at later. Uh, the point right now, though, is to preserve all of that data uh, so that no matter what has happened, you can go back and reconstruct this. So that's, that's what's going on right now. NASA has ordered flight controllers to pull out emergency procedures and ordered them to retain all of their records. That's mm -hmm. the official mm -hmm. word right now coming from NASA. Bill, translate that for us. What are they saying? Uh, I, I'm sorry, Russ, I didn't catch that. No problem at all. NASA is now officially saying that it has ordered flight controllers to pull out all emergency procedures and ordered them to maintain, to retain, I should say, all of the records. Translate for us, what does that really mean? Uh, the, the, the whole point here is to, to preserve the information that came from the shuttle. If you're going to reconstruct an accident, you have to know uh, what the data was leading up to it, and that's what they're doing. And it's a complicated procedure. As you can see all of those screens, those are computers that are all hooked up on a high-speed fiber optic network. Uh, it's, a, it's an enormous amount of data from the shuttle all through the flight, every second during the, the descent. Now, one thing I'll point out, Russ, is that at the point when they lost communications, uh, the communications were spotty, and that's not unusual. When you mm -hmm. get a, a lot of heat around the orbit or a plasma, plasma builds up, builds up around the vehicle, and sometimes it makes the communications to NASA's communications satellite overhead a little bit spotty and intermittent, and I didn't think anything unusual of that at that point. Uh, of course, when they didn't re-establish contact is when you uh, begin to get concerned. And of course, now we're nearly 14 minutes past the projected uh, touchdown time. Mm -hmm. uh, the shuttle's definitely not in the air at this point, that's for sure. It has definitely gone down somewhere. We just, we don't know the details or know where.